Do you love to go fast? Are you the sort of player who forgets they can double jump while playing Scout? Are you a major proponent of using off-meta weapons? If you said yes to any of the following, I have the guide for you. How yin's doing? I'm an Ian, and this is my TF2 How to Kill Streak series, where we look at the best and worst TF2 has to offer, and I show you how to get a kill streak with it. Because everything is a bad idea until it works. Today, as you are no doubt aware from reading the title and thumbnail of this video, we'll be covering the Babyface's Blaster. So without further ado, let's get into it. Gotta go fast! The Babyface's Blaster was added to TF2 back in 2012 during the Pyromania update as part of the Public Enemy item set, and can be crafted by combining two short stops with a reclaimed metal. However, like always, I recommend either trading or waiting for a random drop if you wish to acquire this weapon for yourself. As for what this weapon actually does, it grants you a speed boost as you deal more and more damage to enemy players, at the cost of reducing your base movement speed by 10% as well as your clip size by two shots. The speed boost granted by this weapon can be quite amazing considering that it actually takes you up to the in-game speed cap, meaning weapons like the Disciplinary Action and Conch don't actually affect you whatsoever since they can't boost your speed any further since you're going so insanely fast when you get this thing fully ramped up. The big issue with this, however, is that said speed boost is lost whenever you perform a mid-air jump or take damage from enemy players, meaning effectively when you have this weapon equipped, everyone's using the Natasha against you, because when you're using the baby Babyface's Blaster, everything is the Natasha. The reason it's so easy to lose the speed buff this weapon grants is because once upon a time, it was rumored that the scout could actually outrun his own hitbox when using this weapon. Some scout players may try to dispute whether or not these rumors were true or not, but the fact of the matter is, most players on a casual level at least were finding it near impossible to consistently hit players using this weapon whatsoever. After all, when you're moving at the highest speeds the game will allow whatsoever, it's gonna be pretty hard for an average player with a slightly laggy internet connection to consistently hit you whatsoever, meaning any player who uses this weapon with good internet is gonna be at a distinct advantage against players who aren't. Because of this, for a hot minute, the Babyface's Blaster was effectively a pay-to-win weapon, which Valve decided to fix by nerfing this weapon into the Shadow Realm. But that's just kind of par for the course for most primary weapons the Scout has. Used to be overpowered as hell, then got nerfed into oblivion, and now no one uses it. Well, not nobody. In fact, there are three kinds of players who typically use the Babyface's Blaster in pubs. New players who just got it from a random drop and don't know what it does, individuals like myself who are making a video about it, and hipsters who are hell-bent on using any off-meta weapons that no one uses. Personally, I think Valve was way too harsh with the nerfs on this gun. Yes, it needed some sort of nerf or rework, but honestly making it so that you effectively lose the selling point of this weapon if you get hit by two pistol shots from across the map is a bit harsh. Personally, if I was to try to fix this weapon, I'd make it so that you get speed boost on kills, similar to the big earner, at the cost of being incapable of double jumping whatsoever. However, since the only thing Valve seems to be doing these days is the occasional bug fix, updating localization files, and work on VR games, I don't think we'll ever see this weapon fixed into something that more than a small niche of players can enjoy. This is most likely the most map-dependent weapon I have yet to cover in this series, since if you try to use this thing on a more choke point heavy map like Dust Bolt, you're effectively going to be playing Scout with a reduced move speed and clip size, since trying to avoid damage on those maps is best described as a lesson in futility. However, on maps with more flank routes acting as a roamer's paradise, the Babyface's Blaster has an opportunity to shine. Unless, of course, the enemy team has a competent engineer main to ruin your day, that is. But that's more of an issue with playing Scout in general, rather than an issue with the Babyface's Blaster specifically. My advice with the Babyface's Blaster is to treat it like playing God. It's a sometimes thing. WHAT?! PLAYING GOD IS A SOMETIMES THING! WHAT THE FUCK?! This is not a weapon you pull out at the start of a match before you see what the enemy team is up to. This is something you use when you're already winning to solidify your advantage, not something to help you get out of spawn. As for what weapons to use alongside the Babyface's Blaster, honestly, you have very few wrong answers. The Atomizer and Salmon are honestly some of the only bad options I'd say you have, since the Atomizer's a selling point of a triple jump runs counter to the fact that you lose the Babyface's speed boost when you do mid-air jumps, including your third air jump. And the Sandman's terrible minus 15 max HP is always bad since the baseball you get to compensate for it is just terrible. However, if you like throwing your balls around, the Rap Assassin is actually a very good weapon to use alongside the Babyface's Blaster. 
This is because the damage over time you endow your enemies with using your balls with this weapon actually helps you bypass the biggest issue of the Babyface's Blaster, how easily you can lose your speed boost. You see, as long as you have the Babyface's Blaster pulled out, any damage inflicted by you will help restore the speed boost you get, regardless if the damage itself came from the Babyface's Blaster or not. This means you can throw your balls into a heavy's face, lose your speed boost to his minigun, take cover, and then quickly get your speed boost back as the damage over time your balls inflicted on the heavy restores your speed boost for the baby faces. In fact, this tactic is so effective that many players who use the baby faces blaster actually do so while using the flying guillotine and rap assassin in conjunction with each other since you can inflict bleed on two completely different players. This allows you to recover your speed boost almost as quickly as you can lose it in a lot of situations. However, another popular option to use alongside the Baby Faces Blaster is the Winger, since it increases the maximum height you get from your jumps. This is the perfect weapon to use when you have a flank route that requires you to take a double jump, but you don't want to lose your speed boost with the Baby Faces in order to take it. When you're using the Baby Faces Blaster, you need to be able to learn how to dodge attacks without jumping mid-air. If you're the sort of player who is used to taking a little bit of damage every time you get into a fight, this is not the weapon for you. If you're the sort of player who uses double jumps to escape damage, this is also not the weapon for you. The Babyface's Blaster is the weapon for players who can rush in, kill an enemy, and get out without needing to rely on double jumps or taking a hit in order to do so whatsoever. Because of this, I give the Babyface's Blaster my final rating of a win more out of 10. This is a weapon you switch to when you're already winning to solidify your victory, not something you pull out to help you get out of a spawn camp as your team struggles to get out the front door. That's all for now though, sorry this video took longer than I would have liked. I had both my own and my mother's birthday to deal with, so I didn't have time to work on this video as much as I would have otherwise. With that said, like the video if you did, subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one, comment what weapons you want to see me cover in the future. I have been an Ian, you have been you, and this has been my TF2 How to Kill Street Guide to the Babyface's Blaster. And stay tuned, the Spy's Knives are coming up next.